actually want to switch gears, though, to talk about another civil trial that was making the news this week. As you might know, Bill Cosby was on trial for an accusation of sexual abuse that took place back in 1975. Judy Huth alleged that she was forced into sex acts at the age of 16 at the Playboy Mansion. Well, yesterday, the jury ruled in her favor, making Cosby guilty of sexual assault, I should say, liable for sexual assault of a minor and awarding Huth $500,000. This was after jury deliberations that had to be restarted on Monday after a juror was excused Friday at the mandatory court close of 4.30 p.m. So, Janine, I start with you. Were you surprised by this verdict or... Was it expected, considering the update that we had last week, that the jury apparently had decided all of the questions? The only thing that they hadn't decided was the issue of punitive damages, and that's why they had to go back and restart their deliberations. I mean, was it a foregone conclusion that they had uh, found him uh, liable, and uh, were you surprised by that in the end? So when we got that update, I mean, it was obvious to me that that's how they were going to find. But I was actually surprised that they got to that point because— there were so many holes and so many inconsistencies. You know, she had gotten her age wrong. Um, the girlfriend, you know, said it was Donkey Kong that they were playing, and Donkey Kong didn't come out till six years later. They stayed, they took pictures. There were a lot, a lot of issues, but you have to remember, Bill Cosby didn't testify, okay? So he, there were parts of his deposition that were played, there was parts of uh, video that were played, but he wasn't there. And so without being there, even if he didn't ultimately testify, you know, he comes across as somebody that you could kind of side against right off the bat, even if there are inconsistencies, because why don't you want to come here and clear your name? You're sitting on that jury, even though you know he didn't necessarily have to. It plays into your mind, and you're like, so what if she's got a couple inconsistencies? You know, he's got nothing. Yeah, I, but here's the thing. You know, what's interesting, too, is he's a guy, right, who his conviction was overturned. He was released from prison. Then it became a question, Joe. You have these other lawsuits. He's going to be facing another one down the road. I, from 1975, you would think this would be a tough case for a jury to find in favor of the plaintiff. They did not. And so now that that happened, I wonder the success for future lawsuits against Cosby. I mean, this would embolden people. This is one of the cases that uh, was given new life because of the uh, extension in the law in California that allowed uh, cases related to sexual assault rape to be brought many, many years after the fact. It basically reopened uh, the possibility of statute of limitations for these cases for a couple years. And right now, as it pertains to this issue, Cosby's name is Dirt. And in his mind, to the point that was just made, Hey, listen, I'm not going to jail, so I'm good. So he wasn't he wasn't going to come testify. So there's going to be inconsistencies 40 years after the fact, for sure. And ultimately, the Donkey Kong defense didn't work. Um, you know, I think that, you know, without feeling a, a certain way about uh, Bill Cosby or whatever else, that these should be difficult cases to prove. They're he says, she says situations. There's no physical evidence, of course, you know, those types of things just with the passage of time. But right now, if, generally speaking, Cosby's not there mounting much of a defense, as it were, um, you believe this person more than you disbelieve them, and you can explain the inconsistencies with the passage of time, uh, then he potentially has a problem. They didn't give her punitive damages. They gave her half a million dollars. Assuming Cosby doesn't appeal it, he'll write a check and then just, just go on to the next one. So we'll see how much more of this uh, actually happens. But right now, he just doesn't have a whole lot of credibility, and I think he would have had maybe some of the same problems in terms of being attacked on the jury um, than, um, you know, that, you know, they would uh, testify 40 years after the fact. Janine, I have to ask you, though, in terms of this case, does he have a good grounds for appeal? I mean, number one, there was the whole confusion with the jury. Uh, you know, they, they were decided the judge was actually going to read off eight of the counts, was told over the objections of Cosby's lawyers, ultimately didn't do it because the court was closing excused one of the jurors, brought in another one, had to restart the whole process over again, and now they came to their verdict. And on top of the fact, there was a report that one of the jurors had been photographed standing next to another Cosby accuser from another case. The, the court ruled that there was no conversation between the two. There was no impartial influence. There was nothing that happened. But it seems to me that, the Cos that Cosby's team has grounds for an appeal. It just becomes a question of if it will be successful. Well, they absolutely have grounds for appeal, but do you want to appeal this or do you want to just give her a half million dollars and call it a day? Bill Cosby still has quite the fortune there. Do you want to keep relitigating this and having your family have to watch this and having it to have your wife have to watch this? Or do you just kind of move on? 
remember, he had a lot of claims that were settled by his insurance company. So I don't know what's left out there. Um, if I'm him, I just, you know, he's an older person. I just kind of want to move on. I want to spare my wife any more of these details. You know, uh, his wife Camille stuck by him throughout all of this. You know, he's got family. Um, I don't think I would appeal. I think I would just kind of want it to 